Time to Cozy with Jill and Lisa. We are here this evening in the beautiful home that belongs to Jill, and we are delighted to be back with you after a hiatus over the holidays. That's right. Um, hope you had a wonderful holiday season. Um, mine was quiet, but I had a really nice time. Lots of family and friends. So. Yes, yeah. as did I. Yeah, good. So um, we're taping right now in middle of February. You're probably seeing this in March. So, you know, winter is getting towards the end, but it's still going to be damp. It's going to be, you know, probably snow, probably Dreary. rain, who knows. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit about trying to make things cozy at home, you know, like a little fire. <laughs> Livening up what's left of the winter. That's right. That's right. So, well, we'll first start off with our journal entry like we normally do. So, Lisa, go first. Yes. So what I wrote about in my journal was the weekend of my birthday, which was the end of January. My mom and my brother came to Watertown to visit and stay with us and celebrate for the weekend. And that Saturday we had a snowstorm. Um, so we had gone out to dinner, but then we spent the rest of the evening at our house playing Euchre. <laughs> just the four of us, which is a game that I learned to play when I was just a wee young lass um, and have been playing with family ever since. Um, so that was fun, nostalgic, and it actually ties in with one of our segments it today, does. too. And so we'll that's talk good. about that later. Um, but mine has something to do with snow, too. It's one of those things... The winter, um, as much as most of us don't particularly like snow, um, it can be beautiful mm -hmm. and it can make you feel cozy inside when you're nice and warm and it's cold out there. Um, but one day in December, we had a, a snowfall that was about four inches here, but I happened to be working in Madison. And when I was driving home, I was going past the UW Arboretum, um, which is beautiful. If you ever get a chance to go out there, definitely go. Um, but Madison had about six inches of this beautiful light snow and I'm like I have to stop so I'm like I there's nothing that's that important that I can't stop for half an hour or so I did and it was like oh I don't know probably a foot deep you know and there was hardly any tracks and so I was able to walk through it was so quiet and the trees were all just so heavy with snow um, and because there are so many beautiful trees anyway it's just gorgeous so I have a bunch of pictures that I took so I'm going to give them to Jordan and he's going to edit them into the show so you can see a few of them um, but that was definitely my coziest moment and I was outside <laughs> mm -hmm. that sounds really lovely yeah, it was fun it really was and it was by myself yeah it was great so so next up we have a small town yes we are going to tell you a little bit about some of the coziest small towns in America um, we came across this article on a website called mydatingadvisor.com. <laughs> Go, Go figure. One of those things that pops up on the computer. Um, and we thought this was kind of a neat article because it talks about some of the coziest little towns across America that are great for like a little weekend getaway um, with you and your significant other, with you and some friends. So let's uh, take a look here. Surprisingly enough, or maybe not surprising, um, three of the towns in the top 20 are in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So, the first one is actually the number one coziest town in America is Stockholm, Wisconsin. And I had never heard of Stockholm, Wisconsin. Neither have I. But it says, with a spectacular view of Lake Pepin, Stockholm offers the right blend of shops, dining, and lodging. Antique shops, art galleries, artisan furniture, a performing arts center, and a winery cidery are all part of Stockholm's charm. This beautiful tiny town enthusiastically displays its Swedish roots from food to architecture. Well, Lake Pepin, I think that's where um, Laura Ingalls Wilder, Wilder grew up in that area after she oh. left like this area. The family went, I believe it is, in that area, and they have a like Laura Ingalls Wilder days and oh, sure. right along the Mississippi in the Driftless area. It's beautiful. Oh, area. I bet. So, yeah, I think I can put that on my list. Places Excellent. to go. Yeah. Yes. And they actually break, um, break some of the data down into uh, three categories for determining which of the towns are the coziest across America. 
One of the things they look at is the winter weather. Something else they look at are the coziest activities that are available in these towns. And the last um, element that they look at are the dining options. So the second one is Stowe, Vermont. That's the number two coziest small town in America. Stanley, Idaho is number three. Uh, Ellicottville, New York is number four. Breckenridge, Colorado, which is obviously, I think, a big ski and area. tourist mm -hmm. area. Medora, North Dakota is number six. Seven is Lake Placid, New York, um, which is a town in the Adirondacks. Mm -hmm. Keystone, South Dakota is number eight, so another Midwest um, town. Mackinac Island, Michigan is Pronounced number nine. Pronounced Mackinac, but we don't oh. correct her. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> I grew up there in that area, so we always knew when people were from out of town and they said Mackinac instead of Mackinac because it's spelled Mackinac, but yes. that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> and I'll read a little bit about uh, Mackinac Island here. Mm -hmm. It says, the city of Mackinac Island encompasses the entire island, though most of the protected land is managed by the Mackinac Island State Park Commission. Thanks to its famous fudge shops, mm -hmm. horse-drawn carriages, in gorgeous natural surroundings, it's a long beloved vacation spot. The town is perhaps most famous for the iconic Grand Hotel. Ooh. Yes. And the island has been car free since 1898. Ooh, so tell me about the Grand Hotel. The Grand Hotel is grand. They charge you to even go in and look, which oh. is, you know, but it's where somewhere in time was was taped. If you remember that with Jane Seymour yes. and um, uh, who is Superman? Christopher Reeves. Ah. <laughs> the old Chris, yeah, the old one. Um, not the new one, but the old one. Original and so there's Superman. actually people who love that movie so much they get together there every year and kind of do some reenacting of it. Um, but it's the longest porch in the United States. Oh. And you look right out into the area where Lake Huron and Lake Superior kind of meet in that area and the Mackinac Bridge is in, it's absolutely gorgeous so um, I would highly recommend it but I would really recommend you go instead of high season in the summer try to go a little bit earlier in the spring there's a lilac festival which is wonderful oh, wow. and then or in the fall because in the, during the middle and that summer period it is so busy um, there's a really cool fort that's up there on the hill that's original from like the 1700s um, there's another fort by the bridge, so you can visit two forts in one. Um, so yeah, it's it's beautiful, and the houses are old Victorian in most the most part. So yeah, it's great. Oh, that sounds mm -hmm. lovely. It is. Number ten on the list is Lake George, New York. Eleven, Deadwood, South Dakota. Leadville, Colorado is number twelve. Silverton, Colorado is number thirteen. Sagatuck, Michigan, am I saying that correctly? Sagatuck, okay. yeah. <laughs> is number 14. Leavenworth, Washington is number 15. Kohler, Wisconsin made the list at number 16. And it says Kohler is one of the best small towns in the Midwest with its championship chip golf courses, a spa, and a triple a four-star restaurant it's also home to the american club at destination kohler which is ranked among the best resort hotels in the midwest by travel and leisure readers I have you been, been i have been up there for maybe 20 years the golf courses are amazing mm -hmm. unfortunately you can't walk them unless you're playing um but they're beautiful and there's a, like two or three of them now kind of connected with that one is over near Lake Michigan, and they just had a PGA tournament there last year, I think it was. Um, but yeah, it's it's really cool. And Kohler has this really neat display area, so you can go in and you can see like the latest Kohler fixtures. But they're so beautifully designed. I've These heard little about rooms that. and stuff. It's mm -hmm. really nice. It's not a cheap place to go, but if you're trying to, you know, splurge, have a nice romantic getaway, especially, I think that would be nice. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's fun. Nice. Number 17 is Telluride, Colorado, another ski town area. Number 18 is Harper's Ferry, West Virginia. 19 is Talkeetna, Alaska. And number 20 is Bailey's Harbor, Wisconsin, up in the Door County Peninsula. 
It says, the harbor town boasts a cute A-frame coffee shop, a microbrewery's tap room, a nature sanctuary with hiking trails, and adorable inns. Yes. And so lots of shopping. Top 20. <laughs> yes, lots of shopping. Lots and lots of shopping. It and it's so it. neat that so many of these are just, you know, within a day's drive or not even. They are. Um, from where we are. Yeah. And there's so many more, too. I mean, I could name five of them that, that wasn't even on the list. But, yeah, so, so many of those. You know, we did that girls' weekend, each of us separately, um... On the same weekend, mm -hmm. it was kind of funny. Um, but, I mean, that was close. It's, it's you know, a couple hours away, and, yeah, such fun. Mm -hmm. so, great. Um, so next we're going to talk about soup recipes, yes. because what's better in, you know, the early spring, late fall, or late winter than soup? So I'm going to share you with one that I've been making for, it's got to be 20 years maybe. Um, it's for black bean soup, and I cut it out of the newspaper, <laughs> um, and I've, I've made it so many times that I don't even need this anymore, and I've adopt, adapted it, um, so it's technically not the same as it was, um, but I'll go over it real quick, So, and I usually use it in a, a Dutch oven, um, so you put in your oil, like a tablespoon, I generally use olive oil, but you can use vegetable oil, and then um, onion, chopped up, um, they say two-thirds of a cup, I just use a medium-sized onion, I why worry about measuring it? But I do like to dice it small because I don't like big, mm -hmm. you know. But, but later on, it doesn't matter because... <laughs> and then you also put in um, three 15-ounce cans of black beans, and they're, um, they're not drained, so you just dump them in. So I put two in first and then save the other one for later. So what I like to do is I like to get the ones that have, like, the jalapenos in them. Not all of them, but maybe one or two. Mm -hmm. And so then you have that little bit of a kick to it. Um, and then you use a 15-ounce can of broth. Um, I don't eat chicken, so I don't use the chicken broth, but I use like a vegetable mm -hmm. or a mushroom broth. That works really well. Um, and then you put in, they say for like three cups of salsa, but I personally don't like the salsas that are out there because they're too sweet. Um, and they're expensive, so mm -hmm. I use canned tomatoes. I like the diced ones myself, and some of those you can also get with maybe jalapenos or some kind of green chili in. So I use two cans of those, um, and then there's the juice and zest of one lime. And then for garnishes, you put cilantro or maybe some um, sour cream. I've also used like tortilla chips crum crumpled up and mm -hmm. you know sprinkled on top. Um, but the thing is you use a immersion blender so you put all that stuff in, except for the, the lime, and um, you then do that so it's nice and creamy. And then you put that third can of black beans in, so you still have the black beans in there. So I love it. It's really, really good. And that lime, you have to have the lime. The taste before and after the lime, it, it's unbelievable how much the lime just pops all the flavor mm. out. So. So that's one of my favorite soups. It sounds soups. very hearty and flavorful. It is. Yes, it is. And it makes a nice batch, too. Mm -hmm. so. That's always good to have leftovers. It or some that you is. can freeze. Exactly. It freezes really well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The recipe, I actually brought two of my favorite soups to share with you. The first one is a crock pot vegetable minestrone. Um, Y'all know I love a crock pot <laughs> recipe, especially soup. Um, this one has got vegetable broth, tomato juice, salt, dried basil, pepper, sliced carrots, celery, onions, garlic, and mushrooms. Um, and then some diced tomatoes and some rotini pasta um, and Parmesan cheese. And you just mix it all together, let it cook, and in about seven hours, you've got a delicious um, Italian flavorful soup. That's got to smell nice in the house, Oh, it too. smells wonderful. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's great when you put it in the morning and you come back, it's like, oh. Yeah, yes. I've got this wonderful dinner waiting Welcome for me, home. So. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, um, see, what do we have next? I have one more recipe to share. That's right. She's got two. Yes. She's an overachiever. Yes. So, <laughs> this one is actually a recipe that I got from my brother, who was a chef uh, for many years. It's a white chicken chili. Um, it's also very delicious, and this one also goes in the crock pot. Um, so this one actually has four cans of the Great Northern White Beans, mm. um, along with skinless uh, chicken breasts, but I actually use like the cubed chicken to make it simpler. Um, some onion, some garlic, 
um, some frozen corn, condensed cream of chicken soup, uh, chicken broth, a little cumin, some green chilies, and some pepper. Um, and then after you cook it during the day, um, prior to serving, you can add a little bit of sour cream, a little bit of shredded cheese. Um, you can do the crushed tortilla chips mm -hmm, on there too. Mm -hmm. It all adds a nice extra little yeah, flavor and texture. Yeah. Those are great. Yeah. Nice and quick. Love yes. it. Love it. I like it when you don't have to do a lot of chopping and... Yes. <laughs> prep work is what yes. takes so much time. Exactly. Exactly. And speaking of recipes, yes. we have been talking about your recipe poll for the last we several have, episodes. And we <laughs> haven't come through with it. So, <laughs> today is the day. And, <laughs> okay, this is my oh recipe my goodness, bowl. Jill. <laughs> so, this is a huge bowl that I got from um, my ex mother in law. So it's very old and it's a quite, nice quite collectible, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't have any place to put it, so it ended up going on top of my refrigerator. And I thought, what am I going to do with all those recipes that I, I pull out of magazines? <laughs> so this, this is what I do with them. Um, and it's full to the top. Um, so I'm never going to make these. Wow. But um, anyway, so we thought, well, we'll just each pull one. We'll make it, and then next time we're on, we will um, discuss it to see what we think. So why don't you go ahead and... Oh, this could be interesting. <laughs> I hope what I get isn't putsy, because you know how I feel about putsy recipes. If it's too putsy, then you can... Can I trade it in for something yeah. else? Okay, let me see. Let's i get my glasses back on here. <laughs> this is, Oh, this has a couple different oh. recipes on here, so I'm not sure which you were looking at. Oh, I'm not sure either. Mm. Deviled chicken with kale and sweet potatoes. That wasn't it, because I don't eat chicken. So <laughs> Roasted vegetable chili with cornbread biscuits. That was it. Was that it? Oh, oh there is a long list of ingredients oh, on oh. this one, Jill. <laughs> I don't know. I'll give it a shot. Okay. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right. I appreciate that. All right, I'm going to pick one. Oh, God, I have it. Okay, here's, here's one. Ooh. This is spinach and artichoke lasagna. Wow, Can look at these you? ingredients. Oh, wait, is that a longer list than mine? I think so. Oh, that sounds really good, too. <laughs> no changes. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> this looks very rich. Wow. Okay. It sounds delicious. It sounds really, really good. Okay, well, that's mine. So. All right, so we'll go. see how it goes, and we'll check back in next time. And we will draw another one. Yes. <laughs> if Lisa's still game. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. I tend to pick out putsy recipes. So, <laughs> so yes. anyway. All right. So we got that. What else do we have now? Let's talk about some different ways that we can liven up the midwinter. Yes. Relieve right. the blahs that tend to come this time of year with the dreary weather yeah. and the cold. So we came across some interesting ideas um, for adding a little bit of life and uh, extra little fun and enjoyment this yeah, time of year. Yeah, and something maybe a little different. Um, so the one that I was really caught in my eye was a waffle bar. So this could be morning, brunch, lunch, whatever, because who doesn't like waffles? Mm -hmm. um, you can make your own waffles, and I'd suggest that if you do that, you just freeze them. Because you don't want to sit there and be making waffles while your yeah. friends are having fun. So <laughs> I would say that. Or you know what? You can always just get the frozen, not necessarily those ones we always think about, but I know there's a, a brand called, I think it's Vans, if I'm not mistaken. But it's nice because they have different kinds. So they've got like gluten-free, they have whole wheat. So it'd be nice to kind of, you know, mix things up a little bit so everybody can kind of get what they want. Um, and then some of the, the toppings that you can put out are, of course, maple syrup and don't get the icky sugary ones you know get the real stuff yes. i mean this is wisconsin it makes yeah. a huge difference. oh my gosh once you go you never go back <laughs> um but it's so good and if you don't want it to be like it's there's a lot of calories obviously so one of the things i do is i take fresh fruit um put it in a pan and let it kind of cook down a little bit but then put syrup in that so there's not necessarily a lot, but you get that maple flavor with the, the berries usually is what I use. That's um, a great idea. It really tastes good. Um, so that could be some an option, any kind of fruit. 
Um, you can put even nuts on it if you want to. Whipped cream, mm -hmm. yogurt. I mean, every the sky's the limit on this stuff. Um, chocolate chips. Chocolate chips. Uh, maybe chocolate sauce that mm -hmm. you can dribble on it. Um, and there's also like, um, like I said, nuts and maybe coconut and, um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do. And the options are great. Maybe honey, peanut butter. Oh, yeah. That might be nice with chocolate Nutella. too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's so many options. So you just have it out there for people. And the best way to make your waffles so that, again, you're not going to put them in the toaster. Mm -hmm. Put them in the oven. So, you know, you just flip them over once and you're good to go. And that's pretty easy, so. So I think that'd be fun. Yeah. And while you're at it, you can play games. <laughs> yes. So another uh, idea that we had for uh, bringing a little bit of extra fun in this time of year is doing a game night. And I brought so many props with me. <laughs> so some of my favorite um, that we will pull out occasionally, I mentioned playing euchre with my family. So just having you know, a deck of cards stashed away um, for times like that is always a good idea. Uno is another one that's so easy. Mm -hmm. uh, my 92-year-old my mom can play this. My little 8-year-old nieces can play this. Um, those are always, you know, very compact and portable and easy to play. These are pretty cool. We got these as a gift from some friends of ours. They are called Magna Shapes. And while I wouldn't really describe them as a game, because it's not necessarily competitive, it's actually a really fun way to spend some time and be creative. So there are these little magnetic shapes. They stick right to the metal tray that they come in, and you can use them to create all sorts of cool designs. Um, and they come in different shapes. These are all round. Um, I have another one here that's got, you know, different shapes, uh, some semicircles, some squares in it. So these are a lot of fun, too, um, for both adults and kids. I would definitely recommend those. We have got Cranium. This one I haven't played in a long time, but it's so much fun because it, it's got different um, elements to it. So there's a category, I think, that's called, like, the humdinger, uh -huh. where it incorporates music, and you have to hum a song to get your team to guess what the song is. Um, there's the data head, which is, like, the like trivia um, type of information component to it. There's a creative cat, which, if I remember correctly, has some drawing um, and star yes. performer in there. Word worm um, has to do with, like, language and um, different words and their meanings. So this is always a real fun one, too, to play with all different ages. Yeah, I've played that one, too, and it really is. It's, it's fun because sometimes you play a game, like, one person you know is going to win. But with that one, there's, like, four different areas, so most people aren't strong in all four. Yes, so that kind of gives it, yeah, it's a little bit better, mm -hmm. a little bit more fair. This one is the Tumbling Wood Tower game. Um, a lot of us have, um, or know it as Jenga, Jenga. is another um, brand name for it. This one is real fun. It, you know, it just takes a little bit of a setup to get the stack out of the box. Um, but again, this is great for all ages. A couple of years ago at Christmas time, we actually got a five foot tall floor version of this for my uh, nephew and his wife and their family mm -hmm. for Christmas, which is great. Um, and they play it outdoors on their patio I've got and a their set driveway. Too. Yeah, it's um, fun. And then you can get. The little tabletop version for indoors, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the one for outside. My mom, 89 years old, she thinks that that's the best thing. in the. She just loves pulling it out. And we're just afraid <laughs> that it's going to fall on her because it's tall. And those are big blocks. They are pretty big so, pieces. Yeah, yeah you have to be it. careful. You really you do. do. Yeah. I used to play that when I was activities director at the Senior oh, Living sure, Center. Sure. And the, um, the residents enjoyed that a lot, oh, too. Because yeah. okay. it doesn't take a lot of thought or a no, lot of strategy. No. So it's a good one. And then this one is so old, it has my maiden name on it yet. <laughs> um, I have had this for years and years. Clue, it's a classic. Um, I would say it's quite a cozy game to it figure is. out who yes. did it and where and with what weapon. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, those are my game night recommendations. Okay. 
Um, and I would suggest apples to apples, which oh, that's is another good one. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, but it's really nice. In fact, I've got that over in my Airbnb because it's good for all ages, yep. and it's fun, and it doesn't take a whole lot of thought, and lots of laughter going mm. on, and it's simple because there's just cards basically. So, yes. so that's a good one. Um, Taboo is also one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I like that. And then this game I've played with my friends, and they're three boys, different ages, and it's called Face Ten, made from the people who do Uno. Um, and basically what you need to do is you need to get, it's kind of like if Yahtzee was combined with Uno, I guess, kind of similar to that, but it, and it takes a while to do because there's 10 phases that you have to get. So the first one that completes all that wins. And it was kind of funny because the youngest kid won. Uh, of course. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's a good one. That's a one that a lot of people don't know about. So, yeah. And Monopoly, of course. Yes. But I refuse to play it with most people. So. Yeah, I don't, they're mean. it's not they one of my mean. favorites. Yeah, Pe that's not a cozy game. No, it's not a cozy not game. Not a cozy game. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> so, you know, have your waffle brunch, your waffle bar, mm -hmm. um, plan a game night, and uh, have a little bit of fun this time of year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That would be so much. I would, I would want to go to that party. Yeah. So. <laughs> you know, that would be a great way to celebrate Valentine's Day Definitely. or Galentine's mm -hmm. Day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or even, you know, St. Patrick's Day is coming mm -hmm. up, too. So you can have, you know, green sprinkles for your waffles. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that would be great. That would be great. Um, and then while you're going to have this party, maybe you should make your home feel cozy. So. Yes. A um, few things to talk about there. Um, you know, just just right here, this is not, this is just a little mechanical fire, little tiny little thing that's actually just a heater. It's a space heater, but it looks nice mm -hmm. and it really warms the room up for me. I can put it on heat. I can put it on just the color. So it's nice. Same thing with candles. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so many small touches. Low light, you know, that's cozy. Um, Nice soft decorations. That's cozy. Yes. What do you have on your list of things to that are cozy? So this um, article came from a blog post from yesandyes.org. Um, and one thing that she mentioned was light all the candles. <laughs> Just put them all over the room, light them. She actually recommended wooden wick candles. Oh, well, these which, are just um, batteries. <laughs> okay, well, that works too. Yeah. Um, wooden wicks. Wooden wick because she says they're a little bit more expensive, but they're worth it because they actually make like the crackling fire sound. Oh. And it, she said it almost makes the room smell like a campfire. Interesting. Um, so I've never tried the wooden wick. I've never seen those. So that would be interesting yeah. to, uh, yeah. And the warm, adding the warm, cozy lighting, like mm -hmm. you know, you said with the battery um, candles or just the lamps always help with creating sort of that yeah. ambiance in the room. Your light bulbs make a difference yes. too. Get the warm, yes, not the cold, cool. That is not good. Maybe for your kitchen, I mean, maybe, mm -hmm. but for any kind of a room like this, you want that warm light. Yes. Um. Swapping in warmer textured furnishings this time of year. Now, I don't know about this one. So she recommends things like velvet curtains. I don't know that I would go all out and get velvet curtains. I know you would. <laughs> I used to have velvet curtains. <laughs> <laughs> but she said also something like corduroy pillows. Just to add Text. like that extra textural element mm -hmm. um, that makes things a little bit cozier and a little bit uh, like, you know, more substantial yeah, this time yeah. of year. And also she suggested swapping out your oriental rugs for something a little thicker, maybe a little shaggier. Um, that type of thing mm -hmm. can help liven up the room too, make it a little cozier. Yeah. Getting the perfect slippers and perfect house sweater. I would totally agree with that for making um, making things a little cozier at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the perfect one. They're hard to find. Though, yes, they? they are. You have to do some testing. So. Yes. Um, I could probably go off that little house sweater. Um, so I found something on Pinterest that I thought was interesting where they took a blanket. Um, in this particular case, they took a carriage blanket, which I think is kind of like a buggy or size for a baby, which I'd never heard of before, but it's kind of small. So anyway, I didn't have that. So I thought, well, I'm just going to go buy some fleece because 
it comes in every possible design, color, thickness, whatever. So I found one that I really liked that I thought would be nice to go from spring or from you know late winter into spring, mm -hmm. especially when maybe you're outside and it gets chilly at night. Um, so I found one with flowers, and um, so I started experimenting. So the size that I saw online for this baby crib or whatever, um, I tried that first. It was pretty small. It was more like a shrug, unless you're a kid. This might work. So I ended up coming up with a size of 36 by 60, which is basically a yard of fleece. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty easy to get all kinds of different textures. Um, and what you do is you put it oblong, you take the corners, fold them towards the middle, you overlap them a little bit, sew that, and you're good to go. Um, I did it, I'll, set, I'll have a couple of pictures that you can put on so you kind of get a better idea of what it is. Um, very cozy, mm -hmm. um, and you know, you just can wrap it, so yeah. Like a little cocoon. Exactly, sort of it's a cocoon. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, you can think about all of, they even have like fleece stuff that's fuzzy like this oh, too, sure. which would be great. So, good for gifts too, real yeah. simple. And fairly inexpensive. Very much mm -hmm. so, especially if you find it on, on sale. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so try it. Try it. I can't wait to see yeah. yours. <laughs> I really like this next idea for creating a cozier home. She recommends simmering some good smelling things on the stove. Mm -hmm. um, and you can put it either in a pot on the stove, you could put some of these in the crock pot and just let them uh, simmer all day. A couple of recipes, and we can put these on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, a cinnamon apple simmer pot, which is just cinnamon sticks, apple peels, orange rinds, and whole cloves. Just let it simmer. Um, smells wonderful. Another recipe that she had for a simmer pot was a pumpkin spice simmer pot, which is four tablespoons of apple cider, a generous sprinkle of pumpkin spice seasoning, some cinnamon sticks, ground nutmeg, a drop of vanilla extract, mm. and some whole cloves. Oh, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> yes, that's a great way to add um, an extra um, sense, you know. Mm -hmm. to, uh, For sure, and it does, it's not going to be super overwhelming. No. So that's mm. great. That's great. She also suggests running your humidifier um, because, you know, Midwest winters, everything gets so dry starting yeah. in the fall. Um, and that's just a good way to add a little warmth and a little um, extra moisture to your environment, too. It'd probably help you with uh, sleeping and with not getting a cold because yes. your nasals doesn't, yeah. Yes. Um, but she does say be sure that you clean it regularly so yes. that you're not... Uh, you know, spewing out all those that germ-filled air into your house. Um, create an excuse to use your stove or oven. Um, so like soups and casseroles and breads, all those cookies. wonderful <laughs> yes, cookies, <laughs> cakes, all those wonderful things you can pop in the oven and um, you know the smell and the taste and the oh, just yes. that wonderful bacon oh, yeah. to mm -hmm. add all those great things. Yeah, pet cuddling. I mean, what else can you <laughs> ask for? <laughs> we got Seamus down here who's been helping us. Yes, yeah, hi, bud. Oh, you're such a you good boy. You probably saw him in popping in and out of frame, but he's being a good boy, so he, he was allowed to stay. Yes. But how nice to cuddle with your pet. Yes. You know, even just petting a dog brings your blood pressure down. Yes, so. we have two little lap dogs at our house. And I tell you, it's so nice because they kick off a little extra heat when yeah. they're on your lap, yeah. um, snuggled under the blanket, and they like to soak up our heat, too. So <laughs> uh, sure. it's delightful this time of year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she recommends starting a fire, or if you don't have a functional fireplace, you can pop in one of those... Um, you know, fireplace DVDs or pull up a YouTube video of the fireplace. I think Ru Roku has an actual fireplace channel. I think you're probably <laughs> right, yes. Um, one of the last things she suggests is turning on the cozy music, oh. which we had put together the cozy Christmas mm -hmm. holiday um, playlist, which I still listen to because I like it so yeah, much. it's very um, nice. Aside from the holidays, though, you can think of, you know, a nice, like, jazz mix, maybe. Um, I find James Taylor very cozy, his I do music. Too. Mm -hmm. um, Ingrid Michaelson is another one that I find really appealing mm -hmm. and cozy. Um, what are some of your cozy um, music I like favorites? Michael Bublé. Um, I'm trying to think of some of my other ones uh, that I enjoy. Um, I can't 
nothing off the top of my head as far as cozy goes, but definitely like light jazz. Maybe George Winston. That's mm -hmm. a real good one. Um, yeah. Um, I think Nancy Griffith actually is a good one for me, or Mary Chapin Carpenter. Yes. Yeah. Classic. Those are always yes. always nice. So. And the nice thing about these two, you know, like the music or um, the the slippers and the the house sweater, even the I mean the pets. Sometimes if you're traveling, these are all things that you can take with you to take yeah. the cozy along with you mm -hmm. um, wherever you're going. Yeah, so. that's a great idea. So. Um, so I, I think we're done. We've, uh, yeah. I believe, probably gone over a half hour. <laughs> yes, Jordan. Is Sorry, Jordan. Like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, we're done. But um, oh, I just want to mention too. This is um, something I kind of came up with, which is orange juice and apple cider and a squeeze of lime and a little lime for this, and it tastes really good. I think oh, that's me. delicious. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can heat it up too. So, so anyway, cheers to you, yes. and keep this uh, cold winter springy thing cozy and warm. Yes. We'll see you next time.